Welcome to Leaders Recon, where we discuss leadership, warrior skills, and other opportunities within the G3 Leadership Development Branch. Today, we'll be discussing Surviving Ranger School with Staff Sergeant Jessica Smiley. Staff Sergeant Smiley, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, it's great having you here. And for some of those out there who don't know who you are, would you like to do a quick introduction? Uh, Staff Sergeant Jessica Smiley is part of the South Carolina Guard for many, many years. I've done a couple of ADOS tours been a paramedic for a while, a uh, vast variety of skills that I have going on, so. You're one of the first female uh, enlisted National Guard soldiers to graduate Ranger School. What kind of emotions does that kind of bring on? So initially, you know, it's obviously something, you know, to be proud of, to be able to go and graduate Ranger School, not, you know, as a female, but just as a soldier in general. It's a very challenging and tough course. and. Myself, personally, I try to get away from the fact that, you know, being a female graduating and just another soldier, a National Guard soldier graduating, um, it's it's overwhelming and it's uh, it's a huge accomplishment and I'm very proud of myself for being able to do it, but also to help other, you know, soldiers to be able to go and accomplish the same thing that I've accomplished. So it's a hefty burden to carry, but one that I enjoy and uh, want to help others go and be successful with. Before you join the military, what... What were some of the things that led you down that path to wanting to enlist? So I have been a military brat my entire life. Uh, my mom and dad were both in uh, the Army. They were active duty. Um, and that obviously is a family tradition. So I wanted to follow in their footsteps and join the military. Now, which branch of the military obviously was, you know, kind of where I strayed away from what they did. They both went active duty. I chose the National Guard. I had a specific career choice of being a paramedic that I wanted to pursue while still being able to serve in the National Guard. Mm -hmm. And they both kind of tied in together with the homeland security type field. And what MOS did you go into? M an MP, 31 Bravo. For some of those who are maybe uh, listening in or watching, uh, can you kind of give a, a brief overview of what exactly is Ranger School? So Ranger School is the Army's premier leadership school. Um, it's supposed to be able to help develop and teach different leadership styles, traits, qualities in a leader, um, throughout the various stages. And so with that, about how long is it? 62 days. 62 days. Mm -hmm. As long as... As long as it takes you to get through. That's yeah. how long it is. <laughs> <laughs> and before you went, what was one of the, uh, the things that came to you? It was like, I'm definitely, not only do I want to try this, but I want to do this and I will complete it. Like, what was some of your motivation behind it? Uh, so motivation for myself is that I've always tried to go and, you know, find out the, the hardest tasks that I could and accomplish them uh, more for internal, um, like my own personal goals, not necessarily for any other goals than that. Mm -hmm. This was an internal goal, but also one that I could use to influence and develop other soldiers as well. So using those leadership skills that, you know, I acquired through going to school um, to help influence and guide others in their, you know, journeys forward. Yeah. What was some of your prep for going to the school to get not only physically ready, but also mentally ready? So one of the big things is that I, for a couple months leading up to, is that I completely immersed myself in everything that was Ranger School. So training programs as far as getting physically ready, but then also making sure academically I was ready as well. Um, you know, the website for uh, the Ranger Training Brigade has a lot of information on it, and I made sure to familiarize with myself with that, spending at a minimum about an hour a day uh, reading up and trying to learn as much as I could prior to going in areas that I was lacking, specifically with like patrolling and some of those skills that I've never had to do or utilize before. Uh, was there any kind of National Guard specific training that you went through to help prep you? So I went to the Ranger Training Assessment course, which is held at Fort Benning, and that's the uh, required National Guard, essentially pre-Ranger that you're supposed to go to. And that was very beneficial in not only solidifying the information that I already been studying, but also helping with like the practical application of the information I had been studying. So you moved straight from that right into uh, reporting over to Ranger School? Uh, initially I did, yes. And then uh, I had a little little mishap in my first week of rap week and then I ended up going back a couple weeks later um, with a small break in between so with that as one of the common themes with a lot of people who go through you know the odds are you being just a straight shot all the way through is pretty slim so you just have to get used to you know not I won't say the word failure because it's not failure just I you said setbacks like what are some of the things that you told yourself 
when you had this setback? I told myself that I knew I had prepared as much as I could and mentally I was ready, physically I was ready. There was just some extraneous factors that happened that caused me to have that setback. So going into it a second time, I knew kind of what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, however, that is a pro and a con. Um, a pro because I knew how to game plan it a little better, a con because I knew what to expect. Um, but essentially just keeping that hype man mentality and knowing that I've done everything up to this point to be prepared and ready to go and there was not much else I could do. What do you feel was your biggest challenge going through? So it's a lot easier to read and memorize something than to actually go out and do it. And I learned that um, in the very beginning that, you know, I memorized all of the steps appropriately and I could tell you exactly what we needed to do next, but physically going out and doing it was something completely different and never having done that before, that was kind of one of the biggest challenges that I had. I learned a lot in that aspect. So one of the other big things like for the whole, that inner monologue, that inner voice that we all have whenever we're going through any kind of tough events, like what did you do to try to keep positive and maintain that uh, positive inner monologue to finish? I'm kind of my own biggest hype man. So uh, I'm able to hype myself up and talk myself into, you know, my my why behind I was doing, you know, why I essentially was doing it. Um, this wasn't just for me. Uh, and this is one of the things in my military career that wasn't just for me. It was for myself, but also soldiers that I've led and that I have the potential to lead. I want them to know that, you know, I was able to go do it myself. And now I have the knowledge and the skills to be able to help, you know, push them forward in their careers as well. You're going through, you're in the final stage, Florida phase, day 50, whatever. Uh, leading up to that, you're pretty much going through the mentality of, uh, you know, I'm, I will make it through this. And what point did you start transitioning into, I've made it? So that didn't actually hit me until we were getting on the bus from Florida, driving back to Fort Benning to Camp Rogers. That's when it became real that I had just accomplished this and that I would uh, be standing at Victory Pond on graduation day. It was when everything was said and done, the equipment was turned in, and we were loading our bags onto the bus to head back to Fort Benning is when I'd realized I have made it, I have accomplished this, and I just have a couple days until I stand at Victory Pond. Pretty great, overwhelming uh, feeling that kind of leads into the day you got tabbed. Can you kind of describe to some of people out there, some of the emotions or feelings that were going through you during this moment? So it was a little overwhelming. Um, I sat on our bus ride back and kind of self-reflected on the past like couple of months as to, you know, my mentality and how I pushed myself and, you know, what I'd sacrificed to get to that point. And it was, uh, like I said, it was very overwhelming. It's the only way to really describe it. And then when it actually came down to, you know, standing at Victory Pond, it was very surreal. It was, wow, did I just do this? I did. And, you know, it was very, it was very proudful moment for myself. And do you still have any moments where you're putting your uniform together and you're putting the, the Ranger tab on your left arm where you go, wow. I still have uh, surreal moments at time. Uh, at times I get a couple weird looks from individuals or from people passing by. They kind of do a double take and then I'm like, oh, what's that for? And then I realize like, oh, I did accomplish this. And you know, it, it, it's, it still hits me every once in a while. What do you feel the description of Ranger School when people call it Hunger Games? <laughs> um, I wouldn't necessarily call it Hunger Games because in the in the Hunger Games, obviously, oh, everyone's out for themselves. Well, that and everyone's out for themselves. It really comes down to the fluidity and the cohesiveness of the people that you're there with. As I mentioned before, building those good relationships and that rapport with the individuals around you, you're able to play off of each other's weaknesses and each other's strengths. So I would say that it's quite the opposite of the Hunger Games. And in fact, you are you know required to work more closely together. Um, does it present its challenges? Yes, you will be hungry and you will be tired, but that's where it comes to leaning on other people to help pull you through it. What would you say are some of your biggest takeaways after graduating? Uh, after graduating Ranger School, my biggest takeaways is, I would say probably the ability to like, not only communicate, but to build bonds and relationships with uh, other soldiers that are from unique and different backgrounds. Um, everybody has something to bring to the table and, you know, you can't discredit someone just because they're not combat arms or because they are combat arms and just really listening to what everybody has to say, taking into consideration and then, you know, developing a plan and moving forward from there. That's a great takeaway pretty much for any career field, whether it's civilian sector or the, the military. Mm -hmm. It's about establishing those connections. I know for us as warrant officers, that's one of our, uh, our big selling points is to go, I may not be the person 
but I met this person once, let me give them a call. And do you have any recommendations for the rest of the force, uh, the junior enlisted, junior officers, or anybody else at any state in their career? Uh, do you have any advice for them before they try to attend? Um, I would say that make sure several months, a couple months prior to going, you are ready to dedicate your life to going to Ranger School, especially coming from the National Guard. You know, we don't live the Army every single day. And uh, finding those small, you know, minute details that you might overlook or not necessarily be completely familiar with or comfortable with and really exposing them in yourself and then focusing on them and refining them. Because um, if you go in with, uh, like, weak areas or weak points, they will be exposed. So try and identify those before you go into ranger school and then focusing on uh, dedicating your life to it for a couple of months because those couple of months of dedication will pay off in the long run. You said that you committed a lot of time leading into uh, ranger school towards training. How did you balance that work-life uh, commitment? So I uh, ended up spending a little bit more time uh, focusing on work than my normal life. Um, when I when I say commitment, I'm I fully committed to to going to ranger school and spent most of my days consumed in something that had to do with ranger school, whether it be an hour of studying, four, four and a half, five hours in the gym or out rucking. Um, and I kind of had the understanding with my personal life that, you know, these next couple of months were going to be dedicated to training for this. Um, and that's just having a good support network, you know, in the, my personal life that supported that and understood that it would only be a couple of months. Um, in hindsight, I probably could have spent a little less time preparing and a little more like having a better balance, but I was successful, so I, I don't regret it and I wouldn't take it back. So you definitely recommend good communication about uh, what's coming and just that way do some kind of expectations management no, with your support network? Absolutely. You know, it needs to be you know verbalized that this is going to be a huge time commitment and there's going to be some days when you don't want to get up at, you know, four o'clock in the morning to go train, but maybe having someone in your life that pushes you to get up and, you know, having them understand, you know, the amount of time that it's going to take uh, will help you out and help motivate you a little bit more to only do it once and only spend those 62 days there. What are some of the uh, programs that you're working on now? Uh, so right now I am kind of helping with uh, Army Combat Fitness Test and uh, Holistic Health and Fitness and then also helping with some uh, sessions work. And how are you enjoying working with the, the new PT test, the ACFT and, uh, and H2F? So I very much enjoy the Army Combat Fitness Test and the uh, Holistic Health and Fitness. Um, I think that the ACFT uh, is going to bring a whole new uh, dimension of soldier into the military and it's going to take some uh, soldiers that are already in and develop them into, you know, whole, a brand new soldier, essentially. I prefer the new ACFT over the old APFT because now it's a lot more fun and engaging for the, the whole unit. And even though I definitely feel it a lot more, especially <laughs> with that sprint drag carry, mm -hmm. I feel a little bit better, though, mm -hmm. in general after I finish it. So it definitely fosters an environment of like esprit de corps and competition. And, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of soldiers seem to enjoy that a little bit more than the be quiet, turn around, don't say anything. Yeah, so. the more dystopian approach. Mm -hmm. So what's one piece of leadership advice that you have for that brand new soldier, just graduated basic, just out of AIT? What's one thing, one piece of advice that you have for them? The one piece of advice would, that I would have for them is something that uh, I had someone tell me once, and that's your military career will only go as far as you push it. So don't be afraid to push the limits and uh, put in for every school that you can, put in for every opportunity that you can, and you're gonna be your only setback. So do you have any other uh, big goals? Are we looking at selection next or? Uh... <laughs> um, I'm working on some uh, near and far uh, goals as far as my military career. I haven't really locked anything down yet, but um, you know, the sky's the limit. So we'll see how far I can uh, I can push myself to go. Staff Sergeant Smiley, thank you so much for coming out today and for being on here and a lot of great information. Uh, huge awe of your accomplishment is again i've never gone to ranger school i don't even i haven't even been to fort benning yet so <laughs> thank you for coming on today well thank you for having me i appreciate it and i'd say you should probably go and try it out i'll try to do it at 41. <laughs> see how it goes if you like any more information on any of the topics discussed on this program please contact us through any of our social media pages in the links below Tune in to Leaders Recon over the next few weeks as we bring in today's leaders and pioneers to discuss their experiences, share their wisdom, 
and help you grow as a leader. We will also be announcing opportunities to sharpen your skills and experience as leaders in today's Army National Guard. See you next time. If you like this episode of Leaders Recon, hit subscribe below and leave us a five-star review.